Like any good book, many say that an adequate workout should have a start, a middle and an end. The start referring to a warm-up, the middle referring to the actual exercise bout itself and the end referring to a cool-down. But is that actually the case? Are warm-ups and cool-downs even needed? And what exactly is the difference between them anyway? Well today we'll be answering these questions. But first, as always, please take note of our disclaimer. When it comes to an optimal warm-up, this usually takes up about 5-10 to 10 minutes of your overall workout. But if you're heading into an exercise bout that's intensity is quite high, you may even spend longer than this preparing your body for the grueling effort you're about to endure. Many people first start off with stretching to help prevent injury. But note there's actually two forms of stretching. By static stretching you focus on improving the flexibility of certain muscles, while through dynamic stretching you work on enhancing the overall mobility of a joint which involves stretching the joint capsule as well as the muscles and other soft tissues. To give you an idea of what a dynamic stretch may look like, stand on one leg and swing the other forwards and backwards 10 times. This exercise is called a leg pendulum. Yet it's really not a case of one being better than the other though, even if dynamic stretching does offer additional advantages over the static kind, like increased blood flow and nervous system activation. So try to incorporate a combination of them in your workout. For dynamic stretching, we advise doing one set of 10 reps for each main joint, while for static we recommend one to two sets of a 20 second hold for each major muscle group. Then we have light cardio, which is a type of exercise most often associated with a warm-up. Contrary to popular belief, its focus isn't to burn calories, that's just an added benefit. Rather, it's to increase blood flow helping to facilitate better oxygen and nutrient delivery all over the body, gradually increase your heart rate up slowly to reduce the chance of dizziness or being lightheaded whilst working out, and to reduce your risk of injury during the workout, as studies suggest it can when done in tandem with stretching and strength exercises. Take the FIFA 11 Plus warm-up program for instance, that showed that footballers can decrease the risk of severe injuries by 50%. And then we have mild strength stability exercises. You have probably seen people use resistance bands in the gym often before compound lifts like squats or bench press. Rather than helping to build muscle though, these are done to either rehab current injuries or prehab the risk for them later down the line. Also, when the right muscles are targeted, they can help people lift significantly more weight too. On a side note, if you are interested in undertaking our evidence-based and results-backed personalized plate weight management program, please click the link in the top right hand corner of the video or follow the link in the description. Ok so that's for warming up. Now let's discuss the cool down. Basically the purpose of a cool down is to do the reverse of that of a warm up, with the exception of both taught to reduce the risk of injury. Reducing the heart and breathing rates gradually following exertion, cooling down body temperature, decreasing delayed onset muscle syndrome, and helping to avoid dizziness or fainting are all reasons why people commonly do cool downs at the end of a workout. But what might surprise you is that the literature that has investigated the beliefs of a cool down actually doesn't show most of these things to be true. A 2018 review by Van Huren and Peake explored the available research on the effects of a cool down on psychophysiology, performance injuries and the long term adaptive response. Here is what they found. The green colour relates to studies that they found that displayed a significant benefit. The blue demonstrates an inclusive effect or no significant difference and the red shows significant harm. As you can see, the results of most studies saw no advantages of cool downs. Accordingly, the conclusion of the review was that cooling down doesn't seem to help prevent injuries, reduce delayed onset muscle soreness or stiffness, or assist with improving things like sleep or mood. Instead, the only significant benefits of cooldowns could be attributed to promoting faster recovery of cardiovascular and respiratory systems or preventing immune system depression. And this review actually suggests that cooling now may be detrimental as it may get in the way of muscle glycogen resynthesis. However, it's worth pointing out that cooldown interventions investigated in the study only related to light cardio exercises rather than to things like static stretching and foam rolling. So let's look into the research on these. For static stretching, evidence does show that it reduces stiffness and improves range of motion, as you can imagine. 
However, it doesn't seem to offer any aid for reducing delayed onset muscle soreness after working out. On the other hand, foam rolling does appear to be a benefit this way whilst also helping flexibility. So in sum, given the research we've gone through, it seems that warming up is well worth undertaking for several reasons, but the same can't be said for cooling down. But what's your thoughts on the subject? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Additionally, if you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. So that has been our video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.